Hello everyone and welcome to this video, the third part of my series all about helping you prepare for that PL300 Microsoft Power BI data analyst exam so that you can earn that certification. Now, again, this is the third part in my series. So if you haven't seen the first two videos, make sure to go check those out. The links will be in the description below. But in this video, we're going to focus on a couple of the skills, a couple of the objectives that you might be tested on from the second functional group, model the data. So let's begin. All right, so here are all of the objectives within the second functional group, model the data. Now you can see that this functional group, just like the first functional group, prepare the data, is going to potentially make up to 25 to 30% of your overall exam questions. Now you have uh, quite a few bullet points here to make sure that you fully understand those concepts, but also how to demonstrate those skills within the Power BI desktop. So today we're gonna take a look at a couple of these skills and we'll begin again like we did in my previous video. First, we'll take a look at a couple of sample questions similar to what you may see on that PL300 exam. Then we'll take a look at solving those questions in the desktop. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first question here. So the first question reads, while developing a sales report in the Power BI desktop, you encounter a security issue. The report contains the following tables, sales order, customer, product, and sales territory. The report is connected to an Excel file. Row-level security is configured so that the locked-in user can see their sales only. However, you realize they can view customers for all regions. What is the recommended approach? Is it A, use direct query mode for the Excel data source, enabling bi-directional cross-filtering by default? B, implement a dynamic row-level security expression in the sales territory table? specifying the relationship to sales order in the RLS configuration? Is it C, create an active relationship between the sales order and the sales territory tables, then select apply security in both directions? Or D, create an active relationship between the sales order and customer tables, then select apply security in both directions. Take a moment, think about the answer choice here that best suits the solution to meet all requirements for this scenario. Write it down and we'll come back to it in just a moment. Let's take a look at our second sample question. You have a Power BI report designed to help users track and analyze company sales. There is a sales territory table containing the following columns, sales territory region, sales territory country, sales territory key, sales territory manager, and manager email address. You would like to implement row level security in a way that will restrict users access to the data so that it will only show their data. The DAX expression should work in the Power BI desktop and the Power BI service. The solution must minimize the development and maintenance efforts. Which expression below will correctly filter the report to satisfy all requirements? Is it A, manager email address equals username, B, manager email address equals user principal name. C, sales territory manager equals user name. Or D, sales territory manager equals user principal name. All right, let's take a look at solving these and finding out the answers to these questions that we have just read. All right, so I have a sample report here built off of the AdventureWorks data. And we are gonna take a look at both scenarios discussed in the previous questions. The first one that we are gonna take a look at is to figure out what we need to do in order to configure security so that when we are uh, looking at this report, that instead of seeing all sales for all sales managers, we'll only see the sales for the sales manager that is currently logged in. So if I'm logged in as myself, I should only see the sales amount associated with my sales territory region. Now, right now you can tell that 
there is something going on here because we right now see for every single sales manager, we see the total sales amount. This is a dead giveaway that there is not a relationship currently in place between the two tables that we are pulling in data from. So we need to go in and set up these table relationships first, and then we'll go in and create the, the DAX security role needed in order to filter down to only the logged in user. So let's head over to our model view. All right, now here in the model view, let's go ahead and set up all of our relationships. Now, your relationships need to be created between your tables when you are going to be using data from both of these tables in order for it to display correctly on those visuals in the Power BI report view. So for this, let's go ahead and create those table relationships on the customer and sales order table by dragging the customer key and dropping it right on top of that customer key column. You can see the default relationship is the many to one relationship. And that is due to the fact that on the customer table, there is only one occurrence or a unique list of customers. And so we see a unique list of values in the customer key column. Now here on the sales order table, we are gonna see that our customers are making multiple orders. They are making multiple purchases. So we see multiple or many instances of this on the customer table. All right, I will now create those relationships for the product table, as well as the sales territory table. All right, let's head back to our report view and take a look at our sales manager by sales amount table. Now we no longer see that total value repeating for every single sales manager. We are seeing here that for each sales region, each of these managers is going to then show us the value filtering down. Now, the next thing that we would want to do is set up the relationship so that when our users are logged in, Mitchell, if Mitchell is logged in, should only see the sales associated with his territory, with his region, and Manuel should only see the sales associated with his region. Right now, we can see all sales for all regions, and we want to prevent that. So in order to do that, we are going to go to the modeling tab at the top, select the manage roles, and we are then going to select new to create a new security role. I'm gonna give this one here the sales manager title of this security role. And now what we need to do is we need to create this role on the table where our sales manager information is. Now that's gonna be on our sales territory table and I'll go ahead and save that role and we'll come back and add the filter. But if we head over to our table view and we take a look at that sales territory table, we can see that in this table, we have a sales territory region column, sales territory country, sales territory key, sales manager, and manager email address. Now for us thinking back to the question, we have a couple of ways that we can set up dynamic security roles. Now there are two functions that you can use to set up dynamic security roles in Power BI. That is the DAX function username and the function user principal name. Now username is going to allow you to create security roles and it's going to capture the credentials of the logged in user. And it's gonna capture this based on their domain name and their username. So for example, that would be for me, it would be pragmatic works forward slash the my username a dominage. Now, this would be fine if I only wanted this to work here in the Power BI desktop, but I do want this solution. I do want this dynamic security role I'm setting up to work for both when my users are logged in and viewing the report in the desktop, as well as when they're viewing it in the service. And using the function username, that DAX function username, is only going to allow you to use that domain username in the desktop. In the service, it is then going to return to you the email address. So then you would have to technically set up two separate roles if you used username. Now, if you use user principal name, it is only going to use that email address, the user principal name. So that's what we're gonna do here now. We'll go back 
into the modeling tab, we are going to select manage roles. And now for that sales manager role on the sales territory table, we are going to add a security role on the manager email address column. And so we are going to switch to the DAX editor, but we are going to say that when the manager email address equals the user principal name, then this is going to capture the, the login, the email address, that UPN of the person logged in. That will work here on the desktop as well as in the Power BI service. Let's go ahead and save this rule here. And we'll close this window. Now let's go ahead and view this role as one of our sales managers. So I'll first view this as myself. And so when we view this, we should only see my name and the sales associated with me here. So let's go ahead. I'm going to type in my email address here, my UPN. Click OK. And now there we go. It is only showing me the sales associated with my sales territory region. Let's try this as another user here. So let's select view as. Now, when you are viewing a security role here in the Power BI desktop, especially a dynamic security role, you will need to select the security role as well as other user in order to type in that, uh, that email address, that UPN. Now let's go ahead and test this here as Devin Knight and let's take a look at his sales and see if this does in fact respect row level security for the other users when we're logged in. And there we go. It is now filtering down and only showing me Devin Knight sales. Now there is something else going on here that you may have noticed. The total number of customers here is 18,484. And no matter who we were viewing, no matter which account we were viewing, it was showing that same value. So that means that no matter who is logged in, they can view all customers. They can view all customers, their name, their email, their phone number. That might be a problem if these sales managers are considering, you know, getting sales from some of these other clients, these other customers. And so we might want to prevent that. And so in order to fix this issue, if we go to the model view, what we would need to do is we would need to go to our customer and sales order relationship. And we would then need to modify this relationship so that the cross filter direction is set to both. Then we can apply security. Now, enabling the cross filter direction to both here You'll notice it is currently by default set to single. So right now, the filter, the way that this is going to propagate is from the single side of the relationship, filtering back down to the many side of the relationship. So back towards the sales orders table. Now, in order for row level security to be applied and enforced, we must switch the cross filter direction to both. Now you can select and apply the security filter in both directions. Wipe that toggle to yes, and then hit apply changes. It will take just a moment, but now you will see the symbol here has changed. The arrow is pointing in both directions. I can see the properties for this table relationship here. Let's head back to our report view. Now we know the total customers is 18,484. Let's test this for, uh, we'll test this for Devin Knight here again. So we'll select view as. And then let's go ahead and see how many customers, if it tells filter down to across the customers associated with the common night at Pragmatic Work. And there we go. We can see it is filtering it back down. Let me go ahead and test this for another user here. Let's test this for Austin Weibel. So I will select view as sales manager, other user, and then we'll go ahead here and type out his new PN, his email address, and click OK. And you can see we got two different counts there for our customers. It is now working. It is only showing the customers for each specific region. All right, let's head back to our slides. All right, so if you guessed D, then you would be correct. In order to have the security filter be applied to 
both our sales territory regions and those managers, as well as the customers associated with those regions, we would need to make sure there's an active relationship between our sales table and our customers table. And then we would need to make sure we enable cross filtering in both directions and we hit apply security in both directions. And for question number two, if you selected the manager email address equals user principal name, then you would be correct. Remember, username will work in the desktop by returning your domain username. So something like pragmatic works forward slash a dominage. But in the service, it's going to return that UPN, which is your email address. Now, user principal name will return the UPN or email address in both the desktop and the service. So you do not need to have both the username and UPN in your table in columns in order to set up dynamic security if you use user principal name. So this is the recommended way by Microsoft, and it is definitely a little bit simpler in terms of setting up dynamic security for your report. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this episode, this third part in my series on preparing for the PL300 Microsoft Power BI Data Analyst Certification Exam. Now, this is just a peek into what you need to do in order to prepare to pass that exam. If you are looking for more content, a lot more, a comprehensive course covering this content, preparing for the PL300, then check out our on-demand learning platform where I have a nine hour course focusing just on the topics for that PL300 exam. We cover that study guide start to finish making sure not to skip a single topic, a single objective, so that you are prepared for that exam and ready to pass with greater confidence than before. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.